All right, so welcome um, everyone. Uh, this is shooting the shooting game weekly episode number two. Um, this is a weekly shooting game show that does commentary, an analysis, um, and hype for shooting game replays. That's the direction we're kind of going right now. Um, just trying to raise awareness of shooting games and how to play them in general. We're also just going to be having a good time uh, watching replays and stuff. Um, today we are going to be checking out uh, covering Mushihime-sama Futari 1.5. Um, this game is put out by Cave in 2006. It came to the Xbox 360 in 2009. It's also region free on the Xbox. Um, everyone likes that. So you can pick it up. It's the sequel to Mushimisama 1, which came out in 2004. Uh, these are f fantasy shooting games, so we got we got dinosaurs and bugs getting exploded everywhere. Uh, the literal translation for uh, Mushimisama Futari, I guess, is a bug princess dinosaur party, because um, the first game only had <laughs> the first game only had bugs, but uh, now we got dinosaurs joining the party. Um, so it's really, it's really kind of interesting. Uh, this uh, Mushimisama Futari also added another character. Um, first game only had uh, Reiko, a 16-year-old girl. One of the first cave games to have, uh, I guess, like a, I don't know, a busty female character, I guess. But this Mushimisama Futari added another character. There's uh, four shot types and uh, two shot types for each character. Um, Normal Reiko is the one we're going to be checking out in, in this run we're going to be watching today. Um, but she's the most common for scoring. She's also the most standard. Uh, she's she's got notably a wide rapid shot, which is really good for taking uh, kind of crowd control. Um, Abnormal Palm is also probably the other one people go to because he's got a very damaging laser. Um, but today we're going to be checking out Saps's um, original mode, one credit clear. This is a 411 411 million replay. Uh, he's a Shmups Forum member, and um, he's uh, very proud of this replay. Um, he claims uh, it was his his best performance in any shooting game, so I think it's going to be a great replay to check out. Um, so let's get to the introductions then for who we have um, commentating today. Um, myself, of course, I'm Aquas. Um, we also have uh, Illyrian um, from London. So Illyrian, say hello. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, no matter where you're on the world. Uh, and yes, this should be an incredible replay, should be a lot of fun, and I'm very happy to be here. Great, and we also have uh, Trap, or Trap15. Hello, I'm, uh, I just woke up. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're up. Um, drunk, and Drunk Ninja 24 Hello, gentlemen, that's me, Drunk Ninja 24 or just call me Drunk Ninja. Numbers aren't important. <laughs> Can I call you Ninja? Just Ninja? Yeah, Ninja works. All right, because that's what I was doing already. Um, all right, so today uh, with the comment, we got kind of a bigger commentating crew than before. It was just me and Frenetic, but now we got four people. So myself and Illyrian, uh, we know this game pretty well and this mode specifically that the replay is on, but Trap15 and Drunk Ninja are are here to enjoy the replay and they're also looking to get better I assume at the game um, I think I think you guys like the game uh, yep oh yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. I've, I've, I've actually got a 1cc of this before but no probably nowhere near what saps has done here so okay should be fun to see cool and yeah so they're just gonna enjoy it with us and we're all gonna enjoy this replay um, all right so uh, so in order to uh, properly enjoy this um, this performance by Saps. I'm gonna explain the scoring, and uh, you know the scoring. It's 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 fairly simple for a cave game. This is the original mode. There are more complicated scoring methods in the game, but I'm gonna explain the scoring, and I'm gonna explain it. It's about a few par few paragraphs I'm gonna talk about here, but then uh, once we get the replay going in in stage one, I'll also reiterate these points so that it can kind of make sense. So what's going to happen is uh, the primary mechanic in this game is you uh, you gain gems by destroying enemies. Gems build an overall counter that you'll see in the very top left of the screen. 
the overall counter, it changes color every 500 gems. So 0 to 500 digit is green or it's a light green. And then 500 to 1000 digit is blue. And it keeps on uh, changing from 0 to 500, 500 to 1000 as it climbs as you kill more enemies. So to build the gem counter faster, the player is going to use a proper shot to destroy enemies. For example, when the counter is 0 to 500, he must use the C shot or rapid fire. When it's 500 to 1000, uh, you must use a laser or holding the shot button. It creates a laser. So doing this causes the enemies to drop green aura gems. <laughs> uh, so is it getting complicated yet? Uh, hopefully not. Uh, however, however, to really make these gems worth it when you kill the enemies, the player must be close to the enemy after the enemy is destroyed, or else the green aura around the gems will disappear, and that aura around the gems uh, makes them worth, I don't know, it's quite a bit more. It's basically how you get the good points. So you're going to see saps mostly using the proper shot according to the counter's color, and there's going to be a rhythm to how he goes about this and we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, the rhythm and kind of this balance that he achieves as we go through the replay um, as as the counter climbs it it changes about every I don't know 15 20 seconds or so um, but he will disregard these mechanics when he needs more damage from the laser or when he needs movement speed to navigate the screen because when you use the laser you slow down it allows you to dodge bullets easier um, it's important to, to, to note uh, when he disregards the counter for the purpose of survival. Um, depending on the familiar, familiarity level of the player with the game, you can dis disregard the scoring system more or less depending on how you do in the game. So as the counter grows ever large, it, it'll keep growing um, as he keeps on switching. It acts as a multiplier for all the points he gains from the gems. Um, so the bigger counter, uh, about every 10k, 10,000 uh, gems that's added to the counter, the bullets will become faster, the game gets more difficult. At 60k, the game enters what I like to call a fever mode when the bullets go apeshit, and that's going to happen near the end of the game, and we're going to hype that up for you. So um, other than that, uh, not much else to mention, that's the scoring system, we're going to check, we're going to get this replay going. And uh, re we'll just reiterate these points again um, as we watch the first stage. Uh, so that's that's how it works. Was that a good explanation, guys? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so what you're going to see on the early stages, specifically on the easier levels, is you're going to see him aggressively look to get right up in enemies' faces. He'll have memorized exactly where the bullets from the enemies are going to be like right after they fire so he can get right up in enemies faces gather those more valuable aura green gems and then as the game goes on and he gets further into the game you're going to see him fall progressively further away from the enemies as it becomes more difficult to maintain a high scoring level uh, and you can see him slowly shift from high scoring mode into survival mode but nonetheless this is actually a very high scoring run he hits about 80 percent of the world record right now uh, and the world records in all of these shmups are, pl are basically set by psychotic japanese lunatics who play their game of choice for 12 hours a day so that is no mean feat getting 80 percent it's a, yeah it's, it's a very good replay so uh why don't we get right to it then um i'm going to change the scene on the stream here and uh i guess um yeah, Il uh, Illyrian, go ahead and uh, let's let's hit, right this, let's hit this thing off with Mushima Sound Futari 1.5 on the Shooting Game Weekly number two. So now you're going to see at the start of the game here, um, the amount of bullets the character fires is very low, and he's going to have to she's going to have to pick up power up items as level goes on. Now here's the first one. So you can see power up and that immediately gives you an increase in the shot power. Now you saw already once there the counter has changed colour so it's now gone from green to blue and then a second he's going to collect all these gems and now it's back to green again. One of the things that's going to happen as he goes later into the game and there are more bullets on the screen is that counter is going to jump multiple times from one big explosion so you might see it go from green to blue to green to blue all from <laughs> one gather of a lot of bullets. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So he's already up to uh, almost 3,000 now. It, it, it climbs up pretty quickly. 
Yep. Now here comes for the first mid boss. Um, all of the bosses and enemies in this are animals. For some reason they have gained the ability to fire bullets at you. If anyone asks you when you're watching this video why the enemies, uh, the dinosaurs can shoot bullets at you, the correct answer is simply because they can. If you were a dinosaur and you could shoot bullets, you would too. I actually um, heard so that there's like an actual insect that like shoots like a, like a projectile out of its ass. Yeah. You know? It, 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 so exactly, it's actually yeah. based on real life. So you can see here, he's um, basically sort of letting the screen fill up with bullets before he hits the enemies that are going to cancel them here. Um, a few times here, he can't get right up the screen to gather in, you know, point blank range. But when you let go of the laser in this game, all the gems on, currently on the screen gather in rapidly to your ship. And that's how you gather those aura green gems very quickly. Uh, and straight on to the first boss here, which is going to provide no challenge whatsoever to him. Nah, pretty easy first boss. But a really yeah. cool looking one at the same time. Yeah, very cool. All of the bosses in this game are very nicely designed, I think. And also, this game has a fantastic soundtrack. Um, it makes it makes all the fights extremely atmospheric, I think, uh, the soundtrack in this game. Great sound, great, great soundtrack. And, here and any second now, here goes the first boss. And you can see the counter is green, so he kills it with auto shot. Counter jumps 500 points straight up, so he's going to start the next level, needing to kill things with his laser straight into stage two. And you're going to see at the end of the stage here, he's going to get a what's known as a stage bonus based on how many of each type of gem he gathered, how many lives he's got left, how many bombs he has left. And he didn't lose a life on that level, so he got one million points. So yeah. straight so into right now, stage yep, two. He, he's yes. pretty aggressive with the scoring, like like you said. Uh, he's he kind he knows where these enemies are. He's going to be very aggressive using the proper shot type on all the enemies yeah. to get all the green aura gems right now. All oh, those yeah. poor turtles. What did they ever do? Yeah, I know. All they wanted to do was come out and play, and they got shot in the face. Yeah. Now, in a moment, we're going to get what's known as the icicle section, or the first one. And you're going to notice here, he very gently taps fire on these jellyfish, because when he does that, it makes twice as many jellyfish spawn. So he wants to fill the screen up with as many as possible by just tapping auto shot on them. Yeah, they kind and of then when come the screen is completely yeah. full of bullets, he wants to kill all of them and get a huge bullet cancel. Yep. You let 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 those uh, squids yeah shoot those bullets at you, and then the the yeah. squids themselves also Ooh. cancel in the green gems. Exactly, exactly. So you get, so, you get me mega count. points there, mega points. Yeah, and the counter goes after it's over 10k, so you will notice hopefully there a fairly noticeable step up in bullet speed, and that will happen as he said before every 10,000 bullets here. So now here he wants to chain large icicle explosions and. The problem is now, he can't take too long in it because the mid-boss is about to spawn and he doesn't want to have to deal with the mid-boss's bullets as well as all of these enemies' bullets. Yeah. Just cancel them all with that icicle. Exactly. Yeah, huge cancel there, actually. Uh, now into the second mid-boss, and what you're going to notice here, he's left it quite late on killing this mid-boss, and the reason why is if you look at the top of the screen, there are going to be some little plants coming in, yes, the plants fire bullets, and as the boss is still exploding, all the bullets they start firing at him automatically cancel into extra points. That's quite an advanced scoring technique you're going to see throughout this game, of using large cancelling enemies to cancel other enemies' bullets into it, goes that right away, basically, as soon as the enemy fires at them. Yeah, he's going to use a lot of subtle timings like that with uh, bullet cancelling enemies to get to yeah. squeeze out a little bit more points. Yeah, especially. I mean, as I said earlier stages. on, as as the, as he gets later into the game, slowly he's going to start dialing that back, and you're going to see it less and less as the game goes on. But that's just a sensible way to play the game. Unless you're pushing for a world record, you've got to dial it back eventually. Otherwise, the game can become very unpleasant very quickly. Generally, the first two stages in cave games are fairly tame, so yeah. you can really, uh, you can really, it really shows off the scoring system in the first two stages. And it's no, it's no, uh, it's no exception with this game. Yeah, exactly. So here we are, second boss. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of animal that is. Trap 15. What kind of animal do you think that probably is? Uh, some sort of squid, I guess. Is it a squid? I can't really tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't. That's, uh, that's, that's probably my best guess too. <laughs> But you're going to see here, just by the way here, he uh, he's going to let he's going to stop firing, let as many of those little missiles fill up the screen as possible, and then get another nice cancel there. Yeah, they happened pretty but quickly, but it happened. <laughs> but yeah, this boss also not hugely difficult. This is one of these weird patterns here where you can get punched in the face by it occasionally right here, 
with these crisscrosses of purple bullets. You should never actually get hit by it once you've practiced the game a bit. But you'd be surprised that one can rarely punch you in the face, and that's a real heartbreaker because it can end the run right there. I should, I should guess I should mention too, if he dies, um, his overall counter is going to drop by oh, a yeah. third. Um, we're, probably, we're not, not going to see a lot of deaths, but he's going to want to avoid dying. Um, bombing will cut the counter less so. Yeah. Um, so he's going to want to bomb instead of die. Um, sometimes dying is better, I guess, in scoring. But All right, so here we yeah. go. Third stage, uh, the difficulty's going to ramp up in... It's really the stage is all about knowing the enemy placement because there are these really nasty bugs that shoot like these spears. Um, we're going to see them a little bit later in the stage. So now here on the left we have the first of the major big cancelling enemies. It's this little lantern thing and you can see when he kills it, um, it unleash it cancels everything on the screen. Now again here, those little spider nests you're seeing there, as with the icicles, if he tap shots on those, more and more and more spiders spawn. And when he destroys it, all of them cancel into points. So it's risk versus reward. How mu how long does he want to let the screen fill with bullets before he finally kills that enemy? It's really difficult to get the balance right. And again, that's a place where it's very easy to get punched in the face unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might wonder, how, like, how, how how does he know when to switch shot all the time? But when, after you've played the game enough, you really kind of get a sense of the rhythm, how many gems you're going to be getting from certain enemies, certain bull canceling things. So you kind of, mm. you really have, like, that's really the fun of this game, I think, is once you get to know that rhythm, it becomes, yeah. um, it can, becomes very, like, an infectious addiction, almost. Yeah, like, kinda, yeah. Like, this, is, really it, this is a game, because of, like, the feedback it gives you, the large explosions, the clear and defined idea of exactly what is happening all the time. It's a very satisfying game to play, and this is actually is. a really good game to play if you're new to the genre, because of that. It never, it never cheats you, is what I'm saying. It's always very clear about what is happening on screen and you always know why if you lose a life you always know why you lost that life here's the mid boss here making quick work mm. of him yeah uh, and by killing that mid boss very quickly he should here get an extra couple of bursts of enemies mm. that you wouldn't normally get oh no no he didn't so oh. he didn't actually kill it quite as quickly as he could so he didn't get the extra bunch of enemies before before this section here <laughs> There you go, he's kind of doing some figure eight motions here. Mm. Yeah, the, the infinity symbol, the shmup infinity symbol, as I refer to it, <laughs> the kind of steady infinity symbol around the bottom of the screen. Um, it's a mainstay of, of a lot of cave shmups, actually, um, especially <laughs> ones where you have large clumps of slower moving bullets, as you are here. Now, the second half of stage three, which is where we're up to now, yes. is actually, in my opinion, the hardest section in the whole game apart from the final boss. And the reason why he's actually making this look fairly simple is because he knows exactly in what order to kill the enemies to get the lowest number possible of bullets on the screen. This section, if you try it for yourself, is actually very difficult. And the counter has just hit 30,000 as well, so he's now rank level four. So he's actually making short work of what is actually a very difficult section, and he's doing it purely by knowing the right order in which to kill enemies and by knowing where to position himself so that as an enemy spawns directly above him, he can kill it immediately. Yeah, those, those beetles that, those are the beetles that sh shot those spear bullets. Those are the big problem for people when they play this stage. But you yeah. really just gotta... Yeah, that's what I always run into. You really gotta know where they are and just, you just pretty much gotta take them out as soon as possible. Because those, those <laughs> spears will trap you. In the in the midst of other bullets, so it's oh, really yeah. annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really I mean annoying. that 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 section there is a cause been a cause of many heartaches to me. Um, here we have the giant spider guard, a Psypider, um, the stage three boss coming in to uh, cause some problems. This is another one of those. This pattern right here is one of those ones where you shouldn't ever actually get hit by it, but it can catch you out randomly. Yes. And again, that's extremely frustrating. It's got kind of a random element to it, that pattern. A little bit, yeah. I mean. Uh, and you're going to see here, he's going to stop here, and he's going to let the screen fill up with as many orbs as possible. Because yep. this is not a difficult pattern, and then cancel it so he gets extra large gems. Yeah, but you always want to use that the proper shot type uh, when you cancel those bullets too, because then you get get those green auras. Or you get especially many, many more points. Especially yeah. more points on bosses too. Oh, yeah. you, when you do this it. is uh, actually one of my favorite patterns in any shmup. I really enjoy it. It's uh, oh. fairly simple in design, but. Um, very elegant as well, um, mm -hmm. and this series of game, and this game in particular, has some of the most elegant bullet patterns you'll ever find, and some of the most intuitive actually, and that's a big deal for me, is ones that you know how you should get through it quite easily, but it's getting it through it properly and getting it right. 
Was, um, yeah, this last pattern's interesting because even the Japanese players will bomb on this one, but yep. Saps but here, Saps Saps here does, he doesn't give a shit. He says, no, I'm not Japanese. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But you notice here, there's an important thing there. His counter okay. was blue. He, you'd think he would kill it with laser, but by killing it with auto shot, green gems, large green gems drop onto the ground, and that's worth more points than if he'd killed it with laser. So you <laughs> always kill that boss with auto shot to get those large gems on the ground. Mm, yeah, there's some quirks like that sometimes. It's sometimes not using the right shot uh, because the, the the developers they forgot to do it, they get the right thing. I don't know. I don't know what it is. So, all right, yeah. stage four and five uh, difficulty is going to ramp up severely. It's going to be an onslaught of uh, enemies, bullets, bolt canceling things. Here's a bolt canceling thing. Here, these uh, like else says these these uh, grasshoppers are also going to cancel bullets. So. Keep a, keep a note on uh, how he manages these big enemies and medium-sized enemies, because there's all types of enemies um, mm. in this stage. So what are we? What is it that we're going to see in this stage, uh, Aquas, that we haven't seen as much so far? Oh right. Um, so he, you can see him right now. He's kind of uh, when there's a lot of bolts on screen. He's actually going to be using tap dodging, and but uh, basically all it is, he's literally just tapping dodge in one direction in very small increments because there are aimed bullets that are coming at him and he can kind of delay uh, he can delay the time he has um, to destroy a bolt canceling enemy by doing these tap dodges um, he's actually he's gonna use them a lot uh, just just to, to save time um, so he can get a, he can cancel he can get a bolt canceling enemy to appear yeah. and the cool thing about it is all of these enemies when he knows they're only firing directly timed directly aimed bullets he knows if he literally just taps, taps, taps in one direction, he is technically invulnerable because all the bullets are directly aimed at him and he's never sitting in the same place more than a few frames. So here, for example, he can tap dodge to the right as he is now heading into the mid-boss, then left again, and then back round to the right to catch the power-up. And you're going to see a lot of that in these last two levels. And now we come into, uh, in my opinion, the most frustrating boss in this game, which is the fourth stage mid-boss. Um, I hate this boss with a fiery passion because of this pattern here. Um, but now you can see he's going to let the screen fill up with bullets and kill these with the auto shot so that he all of those spider webs, the long lines of spider web, cancel into gems for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, yeah, and since again, there's so many enemies here, like he's he's got to be careful of these uh, like little beetles and stuff taking pot shots from the left and right side of the yeah. screen that he can't cover. Thankfully, normal yeah. Rico has this wide shot. So she can, she's really good at taking out those small enemies. But if you're playing any other type, those beetles that are over there, like they can really, they can really just, they're like sniper tanks. I, I mean, what, that's what we call yeah. them. But uh, there's yeah, like yeah. sniper beetles. <laughs> yeah, and um, for those who don't know, the the, uh, the concept of a sniper tank is effectively a small enemy that sits at the bottom of the screen and fires one bullet at you from close range, and you don't yeah. really see it you coming. You can see him taking those There was those one there shots. about a second ago yeah. that he saw coming and dodged. Um, but that is very easy to get hit by, and on this late stage in the game, after you've been playing for 15 minutes, uh, very frustrating indeed, as it dumps your counter right down again and can cost you your whole scoring run. Yeah, he's still been very adamant about using the proper shot type in this stage. Yep. It's a, he's scoring extremely well in this yeah. run. There, he actually killed that caterpillar with the laser. He meant to weaken it with the laser and kill it with the auto shot at the last second, but he held, auto, held laser for too long. Uh, and so he didn't get as many points there as he could. And you're going to see a few of these score, sort of minor scoring errors throughout this run. Um, he did the same thing there again, where he actually saw him switch to auto shot quickly, but he didn't time it right. Yeah. These Sometimes, little yeah. miniature mistakes are the difference between a run like this of 80% of the world's record and the sort of run that gets you 90 or 95 percent of the world right. record. Um, it's those tiny little things, because the counter counts up throughout the whole game, even insignificant seeming small mistakes can count for a lot of points over the course of a game. Yeah, it all adds up, because you, it's, it's all about that rhythm. Uh, yeah. This guy, like, the, more, the more syncopated you are with that rhythm, you know, the more, the more points you are going to get overall. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. And it's survival as well. Softening the enemies up with laser and then killing with auto shot at the last stage. You might sacrifice some points by unfortunately killing them with the laser when you don't mean to, but it makes you so much more safe that it is really worth it. Um, and yeah, now here we go for the giant dung beetle of doom, the stage 4 boss. This is another boss where there are a couple of patterns where people quite often drop a bomb on it. Um, and actually this is what we're probably going to see Saps do here. 
Um, this boss actually has some fairly unpleasant patterns. This isn't one of them, this is an easier one. But there are a couple coming up in a moment that are very, very unpleasant indeed. The first one coming up here. So again, this is one of these patterns. It starts off very simple, but suddenly you have these big cr cr crisscrosses of fast-moving bullets. Um, and this may seem simple, there's not that many bullets on the screen, but it's a pattern that will catch you out in stupid ways and you'll feel like a plonker about it. And this one right here... Dude, yep, he's using tap dodge. He's tap dodging as little and as small of increments as possible yep. there. Yeah, exactly. So he only ha he has as long as possible to move across the screen slowly at the bottom. Because if he, if he moves too much, he's going to get trapped against the wall. Exactly. And, and uh, Or he has to make a suicide dive oh. to try and get through to the other side. We'll probably... Yeah, yeah, we get a bomb there. That was, that's what's known as a safety bomb. It basically means he couldn't be 100% sure he was going to survive the next second of the pattern. So he bombed just to make sure that he got through. And you can see it dropped his counter by about 4,000. Mm -hmm. um, so it leaves him on 46k counter going into the last level. If he hadn't bombed there, his counter would have hit 50k. And you'd be seeing faster bullets at the beginning of stage five. In this case, and you can see yeah. here he's actually stopping for a few seconds there, letting the yeah. numbers run up a little bit, just so he can compose himself before the fifth stage. Because right now, Indeed. I know Saps, and I know right now at this point in this run, he was thinking that he was on for a, a, a you know, basically a record and possibly first place on the forum scoreboard. Yeah, that's the thing with with, with this game when you're doing these high-scoring runs. It's all it, it, the the best way to do it is not by dying at all. Sadly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, so, and also, yeah. there's no pausing, so he can't pause here and take a break. He has to just keep going. If you pause, your score doesn't count, because you have to play in arcade conditions, basically. Um, now, the other thing we're going to spot here on this level is these little lanterns, and you can see there's one in the bottom right there. They're spewing gems at him, one in the bottom mm, left. Yes. There are lots of them in the levels, and a lot of them are placed in obscure places where they may only be on screen for a second or two. As you kill them without missing any, the points value of them goes up and up and up until the last few on the level will be worth three or four million points each. Um, yep. And they give you this constant stream of gems. Yep. Um, and so it's important to hit all of them, if you can, to try and really push your score into the stratosphere. Yeah, there's about 16 of them total, and I think if you yeah. get like the, uh, like 12 of them, that's like at least 50 million. So it's a really, yep. it's a really good addition to your score, because if you can see now, he's got 213 million. Um, so he's gonna really he's gonna put together the majority of his score in this final stage with a lot of enemies and his counter is high right now. So everything is on, every all the stakes are high right now. Now from about here in, you'll see his counter has hit up, gone over fifty thousand. So you can see now actually uh, the bullets are really starting to be unpleasant. This is where the memorization of the game and knowing where the bullets are gonna come from really starts to come into its own here. Oh yeah, you he has it, yeah. to know where these big swarms of enemies are gonna come from because it is so easy to get cornered. And then if you get cornered, all you can do is bomb and sacrifice points or make what's known as a suicide dive through the clump of bullets. And you don't want to be making suicide dives on a high scoring run. But I think in a second here, we're going to get the first stage mid boss after this. This is what's known as the first ascent in stage five. Um, at different points in this level, he's going to move up the screen, then he's going to move down, then across the screen. Mm -hmm. This is the first ascent up to the mid-boss. This boss is actually fairly simple, and what he can do here is just take another little break for a few seconds. This is not a difficult mid-boss to do. Mm -hmm. um, so he can just take a chill pill, calm down, sort his nerves yeah, out, yeah, and then just, yeah, get definitely. himself refocused. Yeah, definitely collect yourselves here for sure. <laughs> Exactly. And then notice, as soon as he kills this, immediately he gets swarmed by enemies from both sides of the screen. And you can see, as they come in, because the mid-boss is still exploding, he gets a break there where all their bullets keep being cancelled. There, he got out of position and he almost got hit in the face for it. And here we can see there are actually quite a lot of bullets on screen here for yeah, a second yeah, there. Often because, we, uh, yeah. he can, because he's tap dodging so well, all of that stuff can be tap dodged through here. There, I would have personally bombed that, but he makes a very yeah. aggressive move that through last, that enemy. That last dragon back. pattern is really annoying. It's really yeah. annoying. Yeah. You really got you really got to practice the one. All right, he's going to use a very strategic placement of a bomb right here to get these lanterns in the top right and kill that dragon and get a one up in this building that's in the rooftop right here. Yeah. There you go. So here we go. Gets a bomb. Gets the the bomb back. Gets the one up. So he's effectively paid 4000 counter to get an extra life worth 10 million points at the end of the game and he gets the bomb back as well. That is a positive trade with the game. Definitely a positive trade. He's gotten most of the lanterns too. Uh, yeah, I've noticed. 
So it's doing I, very I think good he right may. Now. I think actually he misses one a little bit before then. But given uh, how congested the stage is at this point in time, I think that's you know he's got all but one probably. I think which is worth a huge amount of points. Right, here comes the, f the final, uh, pretty much the final stretch of the stage. It gets yeah. very crazy. There's like tons of enemies. It's almost like you don't have enough fire to kill them all. 60k counter as well. So now you're going to see when the slowdown goes off. By the way, that slowdown is meant to be there. Slowdown happens when a certain number of bullets objects are on the screen at the same time and that includes the player's bullets as well so he's can to a certain extent cause slowdown to happen by using auto shot at the right time mm -hmm. this right here this looks like incredibly difficult and technical what he's actually doing oh. again is just tap dodging to the right and everything misses him because mm -hmm. he tap dodges properly there so it looks incredible but actually is fairly simple i like how you needed to kill that last dino in the garage in the garage there or whatever yeah here we're probably going to see a bomb. Yeah, yeah. he bombs there. This is going to get him a few seconds of like breather on the descent. And now we're going to see what's known as the pagoda climb. So the pagoda climb is now <laughs> he's going to climb up again towards the final boss, Queen Larsa. Um, and from here, actually, this section is not too bad. Uh, with and this right type, now, what with he's this type, doing because he's got that wide what? shot. Like there's so many small enemies taking those pot shots, and they're all like. They're like in like yeah. little hallways down there in the castle, like what the hell? And wh what he's really doing is he's preparing himself mentally for the final boss Larsa here. This is not actually too tough this, it looks difficult, but it's not too tough and he's preparing himself, yeah. thinking about Larsa, thinking about the little things he has to get right. And right now he has about 10 or 15 seconds before the boss fight starts to position himself for the first pattern, compose himself, check his score, and uh, he has four bombs in stock. He, if he wants to get a big end of level, end of game bonus, he has to do this without losing a life. Yeah, each, uh, so each life is worth points. 10 million points at the end. Yeah. So again, this is a pattern a that looks incredibly kind of tough and technical, bullets flying all over the place. But as you can see, there is a simple way of getting through it, which is you sit exactly where he is and you just tap dodge again. This is the power of tap dodging in this game. Um, but of course, the tap dodging doesn't trivialize it because if you screw up even once, you lose a life. Yeah, he does that first pattern not the way I do it. I didn't know you could tap dodge like that. I, I like went yeah, all around and stuff. That. Yeah, yeah, that was, that's, that's really good because that pattern is so difficult and he and he trivialized, this, this he trivialized is, it right this there. This, for the record, is the toughest pattern in the whole oh, game. Yeah, this, he whoa. really just bomb this. Look at that bullet speed. He's insane. For God's uh, sake, saps, oh, bomb yeah. it, bomb it, saps. This is he, oh my goodness, he left that so late. That was really good. He left that so late. He but he managed to get through just using one bomb. That is so risky when you've got a top score coming. Um, this is another one where we might see a bomb. This is not as easy as you might think it looks. With those lines of bullets hemming you in on either side, actually, space can become okay. very difficult to find here. He's just cho he's yeah, he's got superb play going on right now. Yeah. This is initially this pattern is not bad. We're going to see a bomb here probably. No. Okay. We might see it again here because oh. yeah, yeah, bullets yeah. from three different directions coming and intersecting. And, yeah, and, and it does bomb it. And that last bullet pattern was going so fast too. Like he had the bomb. Yeah. Now here, here comes that. the other killer pattern here. This yeah, is this phase three, nasty. stage one. This is the other tough pattern. He's got to get in the pipe between the two lines of bullets, and he does it now. Get in the pipe, man. Come on. Now he's got to keep in between the two lines of bullets like that. We're probably going to see a bomb here again. There it is. He actually yeah. got cornered there, and he almost got killed. And right now, there's his, there's multiple his nerves saves. are going to be jangling. Yeah. He has one bomb left. This actually now, you can always dodge these lines of bullets by sitting in the yeah, right place. It's memorization there, purely. Yeah. And here, this is the last challenge. If you can get through, and he did. So now he has one bomb free one, for the yeah. last pattern. Come on, you can do it. There's the bomb, and the boss is going to die. And he does it without losing any lives at all. He is going to get a full end of game bonus. Just, Very impressive play. Just in crazy D finesse right Sachs. there at the end. Finishing, finishing off that boss with the bomb. That's like amazing. Well, it's, it's very impressive. Now, watch the score at the top left yep. of the screen as those lives and bonuses tick off. Watch the score. 356 million now. Now watch it. Boom, boom, boom. Up it goes. Big bonus. All the way to 411 million. That is Ooh. the benefit of... Uh, that is the benefit of having such an absolutely massive end of game. And that is a great, great run, as we said. Um, what did you guys think? That was really good. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. have Lots of things I should incorporate next time I go for a 1cc run. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't even have any idea about, like, the lanterns on stage 5 or any yeah. any of that, actually. Well, the the great thing is, and it's this, um, the, the great thing about this is, it 
he strikes a balance between being full-on crazy aggressive, as he is for the first three stages, and then the main thing is a lot of people will see a big score coming, and they'll get reckless, and they won't mm. want to ever bomb on the last two stages, mm. and then they get hit in the face, and as soon as you get hit in the face, your counter drops, and your run is over. That's, that's um, my story, like, a million times, man. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and he balances it perfectly, where he just dials back the scoring and just dials up the survival, and he hits the right balance on the last two levels. Um, and I can only really think of two places of individual sections of, of the levels where I thought he might be about to get hit in the face there, and he made it through. Um, really, really good stuff. Yeah, really with, with, stuff. A, with a run like that, like, he, you really have to know yourself with like how much risk you can take with each section mm -hmm. like the state really is the safest way to play it and it, it looked it, in this run it really looked like he he knew himself in this run because like you say he yeah. he, he, he knew when to dial it back and be aggressive at right at the perfect times and mm -hmm. it was just it was it was per it was a perfect run for him it looked it just looked great it, it was great <laughs> i love that <laughs> yeah so good well well, we have something else here, special, to add on to the end here. So, um, mm -hmm. as described before, as the counter goes up, the, the bullet speed gets faster and faster. Now, his counter there maxed out at, I think, about 65,000. Mm -hmm. um, what we're going to look at now is a video of the final boss, Queen Larsa. And we're going to look at what happens if you're a lunatic, like Saps is, and you set the counter at 100,000. And we're going to look at the bullet speed you get and how insane it is. And more to the point, we're going to see Anthony, or Saps, sorry, uh, we're going to see him do this without ever using any bombs or without losing any lives. Uh, now, I'm going to hasten to point out he didn't do this at the end of a full run. This was done in practice mode. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have the nerves jangling as he would in a high-scoring run. But yeah. nonetheless, this is an incredible sight to see. Yeah. Uh, and if you thought the bullets were fast on Larsa before... This is going to be, um, I think officially I can describe this as an eye-opener, I think is the way yeah. we're going to put it. So, should we go in, go ahead and take a look at this? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so, if you thought that was crazy, that was nothing compared to this. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is last for 100,000 counter. Enjoy. So, yeah, 99,000 counter, and things, he has six bombs in stock, but as I say, he's not going to use any. So I'm mean, I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy this. I never get tired of watching this. I've never I've not seen this, so it should be good. I didn't know you could tap dodge this first pattern, man. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That, I know it's you, mind blowing. You can uh, you can ju you can do it like this, and then you can also move back across to the left and start tap dodging again. I think the way I you was see, doing it was more fun, though. <laughs> yeah. So you see, yeah. I mean, it, it's quite something. But you can see how much quicker the bullets yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're a bit, they're, they're a bit yeah, faster, for one sure. The bullets are just insane. Like, the cut throughs he's doing are, are fantastic. So you remember, the next pattern coming up here is one of the killer ones. Now watch this. Yeah, this, this pattern's so weird because you have to do the, like, micro dodges, but then you have to know when to dodge a little bit more than the, than the previous time. It, it, yeah. it like kind of it, it like uh, staggers the shots on you. I think is yeah. the, probably the way to describe it. Oh my goodness, so Queen Larsa! She's such a sexy lady. I you wish know, I could. Actually, for no. this pattern, you know what I like to do? I like to go to the top, and then I and then I lure like those uh, those spreads like to go to one side, and then I fall back. Like it works a lot better, but I don't know. I guess yeah. I don't see a lot of people doing that. This this pattern scares me normally, so with this counter level, oh, man, I so don't fast. know how he's doing it. This is ridiculous. And he's got to like adjust yeah. his eyes for that what I like oh, to call man. the super highway of bullets. Every time he goes through there, there's that triple intersection I was talking about. You get bullets from three different directions <laughs> coming at you all at once, and you have to dive through all three. Uh, uh, just uh, that. <laughs> just was it there? Now here comes the pattern of death. Here comes the pattern of death, man. Oh, oh, man. oh man. Yeah, this one's nuts. It's a combination of like macro dodging and micro dodging. It, or like it's, it's or, insanity on yeah. tools, the way I describe it. That pattern oh, man, it's like all it's, the time. You can see actually he's using auto shot all the time oh, to trigger yeah. slow down there because otherwise, I mean, um, it, this pattern wow. is no harder than before because as I said if you know exactly where to sit on all seven of the bursts, you can just sit in the right place. Mm. So he just sits in the same place he did before, and the bullets just go around him. One of those uh, is this hard is, to get though because it's like you got to be this, just, like, this really one, close. Yeah, this this one is. Oof. 
So you're going to die if he does a cut through there using auto shot to cause I slowdown. He's getting more slowdown with the high rank though, I notice. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's auto shot, as I say, it's yeah. the number of bullet objects on screen. Uh. Um, here, there, there and there and there and there again, he makes some ludicrous dodges through. That is it, that is Larsa. I, 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 like, I blinked and I missed that, damn. <laughs> It's, it's unbelievable. Don't that blink. <laughs> Good stuff. So yeah, there we go. How about that? That is Mushihime Summer Futari 1.5. That was the original mode. Um, if you like the look of this game, it is available now on the mobile device of your choice via the iTunes Store. That's iPod, iPhone, um, iPad as well. As mentioned, you can get it region free on the xbox 360 if you happen to have an arcade cabinet in your home you can get the actual printed circuit board for a fairly reasonable price um so yeah go and take a look at it if you like there is also a run if you're interested for looking at more there is a run only four million points below the world record done by the person who has the world record on the stg replays uh youtube page as well so you might want to check that out as well mm -hmm. Um, mm. I, I don't know, yeah. I, I, oh, you know what? I'm glad you mentioned uh, nerves near the end um, of the run mm. back there. Because when you get to stage 5 and you haven't died, like, your nerves really get to you. Especially in this game, because there's so many there's so many of those, I guess, just, yeah, hard, hard to dodge patterns and stuff. And it's like, like I said before, you really gotta know, your, it's like you really gotta just calm yourself down. You gotta know yourself at that time. Yep. Just yeah, I mean, and I, I, I'll be honest, I get nervous watching that replay. Ugh. Like, I get nervous for him. Because I know, because like I said, because I know Saps personally, I knew what it was like from doing that run, so I get nervous watching it. If I watch any kind of, to a certain extent, if I watch a world record level replay, I'm less nervous because I know everything is worked out to the individual minutiae, and it's just, it, you know. Mm -hmm. But with that, because it was, you know... It wasn't world record level, but for him it was the best run he'd ever done. You know that. It for yeah. me, I, I got nervous watching that myself. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was uh, an extremely good run, very yeah. enjoyable. That's the thing. Like once once you kind of get at that level that Saps was at, uh, the the risk just becomes so much higher at that at that last stage. But yeah. it, I guess if you, that's what kind of uh, concerns me a little bit um, about trying to go for like one one of these types of scores, it can be really. Uh, discouraging sometimes when you just keep failing on that last stage yeah, like, yeah. Oh, man. but that's one of that's that's part of the thing about this genre of game is having the determination to keep playing and if you're new to the genre watching this and you're having trouble um getting the clear or you're you're blowing up on the last stage of the games you're trying to play um just remember this is not just you because you're a newbie at the games everyone goes through that um some of the best players in the world will have gone through the same thing, and it is just consistent practice. Um, we'll kind of get rid of those nerves, and mm. don't get me wrong, Saps will have put a lot of hours into this game. To get that good, he no will have put a lot of hours into this game. So it, it, he, to a certain extent, makes the game look easy, but that is not an easy game to clear. Mm. Um, and it all takes lots and lots of practice and hard work to do. You know, one thing I like about this game is this original mode... Um, it, it really does fit uh, a, all sorts of level of players, newcomers, yep. and better. Um, just because of the progression of your, uh, I guess, of your score um, as you go through it, uh, there's you know there's multiple ways to f to finish the game with different scores. Um, mm. It's like yep. it just the the replay saps or the replay saps did. He was at he was at that high risk level at the end because he knew like this was what he had to surpass at this point. Yep. Um, yeah. But I guess for like newer players, you know, you can just initially just kind of go to go for a clear of the game, um, be yeah. your first goal, and then you know you can you can uh, advance on you know the rhythm of the changing you know uh, f the rhythm of the changing the score the s the score type um, for the stages as you go along because there's that there's that sense of uh, kind of trying to figure out that rhythm, and in stage four and five there are like there there are like a lot riskier places to use the proper shot type like uh mm. I, newer i guess newer players will probably they won't they won't use the proper shot type all the time they might use laser more often to kill the bullet yep. canceling enemies faster or just try to kill everything on the screen faster but it's this level it's this uh this pr uh, level of progression that the player goes through with this game that i just i really like about it i think that's why yep. it's one of the one of the best games that you can get right now 
Yeah, no, no, indeed. Uh, it's actually my favourite game that Cave have made. I think it's the best one they've ever made. Um, and uh, hopefully we can look at a few more Cave games in the future. So, yeah. Uh, Trap and Ninja, I know you guys didn't get to talk a lot uh, during this run. It was just happening so quickly. But do you guys have any other questions or comments um, that you might have for us? <laughs> uh, yeah. Not really. Okay. That was, that was certainly something to watch, though. Yeah, 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 the, yeah, definitely. This was this this one was definitely uh, I, I, there was more going on I think than the Gradius Four replay that we did for the first um, shooting game weekly thingy. Um, but uh, I just add yeah, they're just two of my favorite games. I'm glad I, we could do Mushi 1.5. It's good stuff, yeah. and uh, you know it's kind of it's got a best of release now, so you can actually get it for forty dollars instead of eighty if you want to get it in the three sixty. So. Mm. Good, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. All right then. Well, um, this was uh, this has been episode two of STG Weekly Mushy One Point Five Original. Um, we all hope you've really, really, really enjoyed it, and we'll be having another one coming out very soon. Yep. Uh, each week, um, if you guys have any um, feedback, comments, or questions, you can go ahead and leave them uh, on our YouTube YouTube page in the comments. Or uh, I am, I implore you guys to uh, register on the Schmups forum. Just Google Shmups Forum. It's a great resource um, for learning how to play shooting games and meeting other people who like them because there are people who, like uh, ourselves, who are very passionate about this genre and we just want to see it grow. Um, so, uh, yeah, tell your friends about our, the, mm. the SDG Weekly and uh, we, we want to mm. make this exciting for, for everyone. Mm. While I'm at it, can I just add two tips for new posters on the Shmup Forum? Okay. Just, just two quick things. Number one, um, what you need to do is go on to the main page, that's the Shmups chat page, and after you've practiced Vitari for a while, you need to start a thread on the first page, <laughs> um, asking people for help with how to do the second half of stage three, um, and also <laughs> list the problems you have specifically with the Larsa fight, uh, the final boss. Uh, and people will always be happy to help you with that and give you lots of tips and tricks. They will quite happily go through it pattern, pattern, pattern by pattern with you. Um, so that's tip one. And the second thing is uh, to just be nice to everyone. There are lots of people there who have lots of experience are happy to help. But real talk, um, just... Uh, Rather than one of the fun things about the genre is rather than just going on and asking for someone to give you the answer with a game or how do I do this boss easily or how do I do this or what's the scoring of this, part of the fun is kind of figuring it out for yourself. Um, and so I would implore people also, just before you make that thread, just to try again and just have a look and see, try something different, try try a different mm. way of playing the section and you might suddenly find that things click and it's uh, you discover something you can put into the rest of the game and shmups in general. Yeah, indeed, indeed. There's there's all sorts of facets of yeah. uh, enjoying. I mean, the these genre. games are these games are designed to take your uh, arcade games are designed to take your money, and the fun with them is not letting them take your money, and they make <laughs> them quite often to be quite obtuse, so that they take more time to learn. So you have to put more money into them, and the fun is learning them quickly and not allowing them to take your money and getting a good score. So just bear that in mind. Yeah, the satisfaction you can gain from this genre is like no other. Yeah, like, I mean, everyone, I, I remember getting my that. clear of this game, yeah. um, and I couldn't believe I'd actually done it because mm. it was like I'd had so much trouble. And when you clear one of these games after putting twenty, thirty hours of practice into them over a month or two or a few weeks, even if you really get into them, you will get the biggest rush of your life. Like it is unbelievably adrenaline rush you will get. Mm, yeah, uh, and I implore so. people if you've not tried them before, just Google the Shmups Forum, have a look. Um, and there are, you know, in terms of getting into shmups in general, Google is your friend. Yeah, and I guess if you're new to the genre too, like, I don't know, try try all sorts of different games. It, the most, I think, the most important thing is just to find one that really clicks with you, mm. because then yeah. you can then you feel natural spending that time to learn it. I think, yeah, I think that's a really good good thing for people to think yeah. about. And, and don't play Daimahu. Don't play Daimahu. I, w I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it. Never. Dude, don't play Daimu. Okay, well, um, I will, I will um, be heading off now. Thank you very much for listening. I hope I didn't talk over everyone. Um, and we'll look forward to doing another one of these for all of you guys on YouTube and on the forum uh, sometime soon. All right. Yeah, thanks, everyone. And I'd like to thank uh, Saps once again for letting us use his replay. Yeah, no, indeed. Thank you very much, Saps. You're the man. Yep, thank you. All right, folks, mm. that's it. So see you next week 
on the shooting game weekly. What will it be? Who knows? Uh, some some awesome game though. These, these first two games are some are definitely some of my favorites of all time. So just want to bring the hype to you guys. All right, peace out.